Eyes are, well, everyone's looking at us now, which is normal. It's the most bizarre thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. I have to tell you this quickly before we get there. Driving into a sighting with leopards and lions and people stop looking at the animals to look at us. It's the most bizarre thing ever. So let's try and find a gap. I'd imagine, though, that these cats are probably tucked away. I was saying to David, they wouldn't have moved too far. I think it was just when the sun had sort of moved towards the west and then shining down on them because they were covered by trees during the morning. Oh, my goodness, this is a tight squeeze. Let's just check. I see one. Let's quickly have a look and see where we can find the others. There's another one. Okay, we might have to just take this little gap here, hey, David? Oh, it's not going to be great. <laughs> and you haven't got the best end of him either. <laughs> oh, well. We'll search out for a little bit. I'm going to relax now. I'm going to get in here as you can see the horizontal position. <laughs> but there's the lion. There's one of them and the other two also scattered around the uh, sort of dwarfed silver cluster leaves and as well as some of the um, bush willow trees. So they haven't moved far. They've probably moved a whole of, I don't know, maybe 150 meters. That's it. So that's all. Hmm. Now, we were obviously talking this morning about the dynamics that are going on between the Avoca males and, or Avoca, sorry, and um, the Birminghams. And Peter Viper, you've just asked the question, why didn't the fourth Birmingham, I think it's in Fumor that's missing, why didn't he come up and help chase away the Avoca males. Well, we don't actually know if they had an altercation or not. I mean, I don't necessarily think that they knew that the, the Avoca males were here. Perhaps only once they arrived and they picked up on their scent. But we know what the Birminghams are like. Normally when they come back, they're very vocal lines. They start calling from far away. So perhaps they started their roars as they were passing through their old territory. Maybe those youngsters heard it and then, well, got on the move. And obviously as that sound was coming closer and closer and in their direction, I reckon they would have gone out of there. And the reason why that other lion, I suppose, is not here is it seems as though he's quite comfortable with the Mungan breakaway pride, but Tristan knows quite about more about it. So maybe he can let you in on on that side of the story. And I think he said to me today, it wasn't Fulmore that's down there. So if he's happy and he's found another pride, maybe he's just going to stay a bit further away. And three big male lions versus three... Uh, sort of youngsters, it's not, I don't think it's much of a challenge. Like I said, these boys are fit and healthy. They're in the prime of their life. They're not old and they're much larger than those Avoca males. And just their bellowing roars, all three of them at the same time, I think would be enough to chase them away. We we're talking about it today. We we're talking about how the Birminghams have definitely got an advantage because it's their turf. It's their land. They know this area exceptionally well. These other fellas are new. They don't really know what to expect, what's around the next corner. So you know what it's like whenever you have a sports game on home ground, you've got the advantage. And the match was here. The match was on the Birmingham's turf. So they've they've gone. No one has seen them. Uh, I think that they've moved into Manuleti. I think they've gone back to a spot that they're probably more comfortable in. And maybe that's where they're just going to wait around and spend most of their time until they're up for the challenge, until they are big and strong enough to come on through and try and take on the Birmingham. Now, these lions have also traveled a fair distance in their day. Remember, the Birminghams arrived in, I think, winter of 2015. And <clears throat> I'm going to sit up quickly. And Avon wishes, you just asked where did they, well, where did they get their name from? So this kind of all ties in. So these cats have come from very far away, from the Timbavati. And there is a property on Timbavati. Remember, these are old, old farms, essentially. And lots of the times people name their farms. And that farm that the Birmingham Pride is from was, was called Birmingham. So that's where they got their name. They left the Pride, they dispersed. And then they came on down here. And, well, they, well, they kept their name. So they've walked a huge distance to get here, too. I'm just seeing where everybody's moving to. Perhaps we... Okay, maybe we'll do that. Hey, what we'll do now is I'll try and get another gap here. Texan has moved on up and around, so there must be another boy over there. And I think we should be able to get a better view. So while we reposition, off we go back to Tristan, who's still looking at the ants. Whew. 
Well, I'm glad that's all settled down now. <laughs> We're getting nervous. We had a very excited lion at one point, and it was quite awkward, to be honest. Now, he, this male, whoever it may be, laying upside down like this, was um, yawning and rolling around, and I'm hoping that that was the first of many, and that the next step is to actually sit up and show himself. I can't see if the other, one of the other males was sitting up for like two seconds, but there wasn't really a gap to get in there, but I think he's gone down now. I think he's gone completely flat, which is a pity. We'll see, there's another vehicle moving, so I'm just going to watch to see if there is any more movement with these lines. Now, where they'd go and drink, oh, there we go, oh, there's one, hello, moving in from the back. Oh, you limpy Lou, no, it looks like he's a bit limpy, who's this, Tenyo, see that, oh, a couple of scratches on the back right leg, have you been fighting? Obviously, we couldn't see much of them this morning, let me go up and go around the bend. Let's have a, oi, watch your heads, watch your hands. There we go. Two male lines. No, why'd you do that? That was unnecessary. I don't know who that was that got up, but he does have a couple of scratches on his back legs. That didn't look particularly fresh to me. They actually look like they'd scarred and gone black already. Hopefully this other boy is going to walk into frame now too. I can see him sitting up. So that's good news. I think he may walk straight in this direction. That might be Nena. I don't know who we were looking at. Goodness, I, it's been a long time since I've seen the faces of a Birmingham, so you might have to help me. I know that Mfumo has a scar under his right eye. Is his right eye? Where he had uh, the attack of the myasis. Remember, one of the Nkuma lionesses swatted at him, and then unfortunately, some flies got in there and laid their eggs inside the wound, and um, and then basically it was a type of myasis where the the larvae of those flies actually feeds on on flesh, and then ate a big hole in his face. But it healed up quite nicely. It was quite a cool thing to see in the wild. Unfortunate for him, for more, but we did all did learn a lot from that experience. Yay, here he comes, and um, that's the easiest way. And he's got quite a sort of beaten up face as well. And then Nana has got an equal sign on his nose. I think. Tenyo is the one that's got the half moon taken out of his ear as well, as well as um, he uh, has got a big cut on his lip or from where, where he was in a bit of an argument. And you can see a part of his lip is missing. Come on. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Come to us, please. We've been waiting all patiently. Everybody's now left. Here he comes. Yeah, yeah. I'm so happy. And then Nsuku's just got the most golden eyes and the most beautiful mane. Here we go. This is Nana. But we've got a beautiful equal sign on the right-hand side of his nose. Hi, gorgeous. That's a very pretty lion. They do look like they've got a few scratches on them, but like I said, it doesn't look fresh. So I don't know if they've maybe been in a couple of arguments, perhaps with even the females down a little bit further south from here. Remember, these boys have been roaming around down on Sabi Sabi. Um, they've been moving around up in Londolozi, Mala Mala. So, yeah, crazy. Now, as we sit and hope that these lions are going to sit up and roar, and I think they may. I don't think that they've finished not, you know, announcing their presence that they've returned. And, Wendy, uh, you've just asked that question basically about their roar. How, how, how far away can another lion hear its roar? Well, we as humans can hear it. Uh, a lion roar from about eight kilometers away and that's with our very deaf ears in comparison to a lion it's hard to say uh, i reckon it'd be a couple of kilometers more than that because i can't tell you how many times you've heard you've actually seen lions fast asleep like they were not and then sitting up ears sort of pricked out listening quiet quiet and you can't hear a sound not even a bird tweeting you know it'd be one of those quiet nights and next minute those lions that you're watching that were fast asleep break out in a roar. And that's when you know that um, that something is, uh, they've obviously heard something. They must have heard other lions roaring in the distance. So I can't say exactly how far away. I mean, you'd, you'd be able to do a test if, if you had one pride of lions that was sitting 14 kilometers away and you, your mate was with another pride of lions and 
The one fella said, oh, my lions are roaring, and the other guy said, oh, my lions have actually just popped their heads up. They're listening to something. You know, then you could be exact about a distance. But we know eight kilometers is a human, and I think it's a, probably a few more kilometers than that, which is, which is just quite cool and pretty amazing. So, like I said, the Birminghams are known to do that. They're known uh, to start roaring from quite a distance away. I mean, I'd be sitting up and I'd hear faint roars far, 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 far south from my bedroom. And, and in the DRC, it's quite difficult to normally hear. Um, the sounds are sort of can be distorted slightly because of obviously all the concrete walls around and you hear it gets closer and closer and it doesn't stop every 10 minutes a roar 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 till it, your windows are vibrating if you think they're going to fall out of the framing and i've had that a couple of times pretty cool when they come right past camp or down past the cars so and then you carry on hearing that until it completely disappears. So they make a lot of noise, and especially now that they've smelt that the evoker males are here, whether or not they, they saw them or not, there was an interaction, we don't know. We we can't say for sure until we see the evoker males. If they've all battered up and got scratches, well, then we know there was an altercation, and they probably won't come back for some time. But off you go to Tristan. The light is fading, but the bugs are still out and about. Something because all three of them jolted up as if they were zapped by some electricity. I can't hear anything, but they literally look sort of west from where we are now. They're looking up north. Well, Nana is still. Oh, there's a line. Is there your line? I thought I heard something far away. Like a contact call. But if they have picked up the scent of the evoker males, they are going to be on high alert to any other lions that are moving through the area. There we go, big yawn. Ooh, a trio of yawns. Very nice. Who's that? Is that a formal in the middle? With that very swollen face. I actually can't tell the difference between them anymore. Is it? Or is that Tino? No, uh, that looks like Mfumo, hey? What do you think, Darby? You're going to all have to help me, everybody. But, you, but you're but you better at identifying the animals than I am. Like I said, I've not been here for a very long time and have forgotten. These cats and what they look like. No, hashtags, fire alive. They're definitely Nana closest to us. Perhaps in Suku at the back? No, that lion looks like it's got a chip on its ear. I also think it's in Suku. Lou thinks it's in Suku. In, in Suku. Listen to me. In Suku. So, like a terrible South African. But again, these boys look so different. They all have definitely got a few more scars on their face since I last saw them, which is, of course, normal, considering, considering sorry, that they've been roaming around out of their home turf. What is wrong with my English? Yeah, that's in Suku. Those eyes don't lie. Golden eyes. And then I think it's in Fumo. Maybe it's Tinio that's not here. It's quite interesting, but we'll wait for confirmation from all of you. Lion IDing experts. I don't want to mess it up. So it couldn't have been anything too serious because you saw how they put their heads back down very quickly and I think they're going to wake up soon. Let's hope that they just keep moving further south and not north or east. Now, something that I've never seen, of course, is different coalitions of lions joining up with one another, except two single lions. And Paula, you've asked us that. Have I ever seen something like that? I haven't, but we can pass it on to Brent and Tristan, who have also been guiding for an exceptionally long time and worked in a variety of different areas. The only time I've ever seen it was when two older male lions on their own, each on their own, joined up, and Freddie and Solo um, which were both lions that sort of came from Kruger and popped into the Sabi Sa in the southwestern corner around there. So, so those are the only two, but they sort of came together as retirement. They weren't actively going out, marking, defending territories and mating with females. They're just sort of trying to stay alive and to keep out of the way of the younger uh, upstarts, because of course they would love to beat down on some old old male lions probably be good for their ego not so good for the older boys and they were they were old males so that's the only other time i've seen it but otherwise no i haven't seen it before it does occasionally happen though again brent had a 
and citing where a single male lion in Kenya tried to join a, a coalition, but it didn't work. They denied him. I know she had a big scrap with him. He was lucky to get away with the scratches that he had. Uh, it's quite interesting, but I sh I'm sure it depends on the circumstances, but things like that can indeed happen. Like I said, I'm not surprised by anything that happens in the bush anymore. Not surprised. Uh, it, it, it's so crazy how things can sort of happen here. Here's a big roll. Now, big stretches. These boys obviously chomped down on a buffalo this morning. Must have been a small one that they caught because they barely seem to have subsided substantially since we last saw them. And Elizabeth, you've just asked if these are cats will ever eat other cats. Uh, I've never seen lions doing it before. Uh, they're not typically cannibalistic, so they don't necessarily eat other lions. Uh, I suppose out of pure desperation, if they're starving, they might eat a leopard if they catch one. Uh, what I have seen, though, is a documentary, and I can't remember what it was called, where a very old male lion... A very sad story. I've told this story to you before. Actually goes out and um, catches a sleeping hyena and then eats the hyena. which uh, He was actually just purely desperate. He was starving to death. And then a few days later, he came across a buffalo that was stuck in the mud. And he desperately tried to kill it. But he was just so weak that he couldn't even tear through the hide of that buffalo. So his days had come and gone. It was quite sad and quite ironic that the two of them died together in the same mud wallow. Prey and... Predator. It was quite hectic. It was one of old documentary. I don't think it was Eternal Enemies. I don't know what it was. But long it was from a long, long, long time ago. So I've never seen anything like that. But again, when desperation comes around, these animals are not going to say no just because the book says that I don't do it. And so I say you, you can't actually ever be surprised about what these animals get up to. Well, they've gone slightly more flat again, hopefully not for too long. Hopefully they're going to wake up and uh, maybe give us a roar. But off you go across to Brent to see if he's had any luck with finding Hosanna. Look at what we've got up in the sky. It's a moon that is slowly starting to disappear because of the cloud cover. And I've also spotted the odd flash of lightning in the distance. And again, something has drawn the attention of the lions in the north. Maybe it is. Maybe it's the evoker males. Perhaps they're calling in the far distance and who knows if these Birminghams will go charging on afterwards so I believe that you will think that the lion in the middle is Tenyal awesome I trust you on this one if he rolls over and he shows his mangy belly then we um, will of course well can confirm it well that's how I normally identify him because him and Mfumo have the most swollen faces and to me they look quite similar especially after such a long stint away and Angela well done for being the first one in fact to get all three of the IDs correct that's fantastic news, it really is. Come on, boys, give us a big old roar. I mean, that's what we're going to be after this evening. Like I said to you, it's been a long time since I've had lions roaring right next to my car. And I don't know if Maurice the elephant has actually had a decent lion roaring sighting. He's actually changed his outfit, David. Look at this. He's become a ninja elephant now. Amazing. He got dressed and ready and hoped that the lions would roar for him. So he's like a karate kid. You see, he's now he's got his scarf. It's too hot to wear a scarf, so he's tied it around his head. Do you think he can do moves? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Behave. We're in the lion sighting. Can't be doing karate in front of male lions. Now, I was supposed to think about this, but I got distracted. And ma Magic Dragon Lizard, love the name, by the way. That's great. Very creative. We've asked, what is the, um, what is my most, what is it again? What is my most entertaining, funniest thing I've ever seen a lion do? Oh, I f I'm sorry, Nikki. I know you told me to think about it earlier, and then I forgot. What is the funniest thing I've seen a lion do? Oh, I don't even know where to begin. My favorite part is when they climb up into trees, the youngsters, and then fall out of them. That's always quite entertaining. Oh, watching a young lion try and climb a tree and go all the way up and go, ah, oh, this is easy. Watching them come down is hysterical. All the lions, and we've got a bit more experience, obviously, I'm better at doing it. But the youngsters are, are, are really not well equipped at climbing just yet until they've learned where they need to put their feet. Um, oh, <laughs> Back in the Eastern Cape, down on the southeast coast of South Africa, I've also told this story before, but I'll never forget it. It was a pride of lions and the most beautiful male lion. Remember I showed you those pictures of Mondoro? And um, 
in the beautiful Black Main Kalahari line. And there was a huge puddle on the road, basically a, along the fence line. They were walking and there were thick shrubs on the other side of the road. And this puddle had completely covered the road. And it was quite deep, probably more than ankle deep. <clears throat> Anyways, the pride of lions and the cubs all walked through it. Some of them leapt over it. And this big male lion got to the water's edge, stopped, put his paw in and sort of took it out and shook it, kind of like what a cat does. And then walked, turned around, and he must have done a big three, four hundred meter loop <laughs> to get around it. He was not putting his feet in the water. So looking at a big, strong male lion and seeing him being put off by a puddle of water was particularly funny too. And um, the other thing that was quite funny was a lion defecating next to one of the vehicles and then that vehicle trying to leave the sighting and driving through the dung and then getting slightly stuck and tires spinning and the dung going onto the side of another car and their guests. Indirectly, but quite hilarious. <laughs> the other vehicle was not impressed. So, um, so I've seen a couple of funny things. I'm pretty sure I could think of some more if I actually just put my head down and, uh, and thought about it. But um, yes, the cats are entertaining. Very quiet out tonight. Hmm. Goodness. Tino, you might be the first one to get up with all those yawns. He's starting to groom himself. Now, obviously these lions have got big, beautiful manes. And something that I do a lot is my hair sheds all the time. I'm often referred to as either a German Shepherd or a, a Labrador, the rate at which I lose hair. And First Lady has asked, do the male lions lose their manes as they get older? I haven't really noticed that. Um, I haven't noticed any hair loss, you know, any bald spots forming on the male lions. So I don't think that that really does happen. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Again, we can ask Brent and Tristan, but I don't think, well, Tristan's not driving anymore. Tristan's gone back to camp because it's dark now and we don't want him walking around. But I don't think that that happens, um, well, not to an extent where I've ever noticed. And I've seen some very old male lions before. He's very interested in whatever is in the north. Could be a pride of lioness. Maybe it's in Guma pride that are coming back. Maybe they're contact calling for one another. Because from... My understanding, it seems as though that the Nkuhuma Pride are quite split up at the moment. I don't think they've all been seen together. And that's probably because the evokers were around and caused a bit of a stir um, and, and uh, scattered. Ooh, seven minutes and 15 seconds for these lions to roar for us. Come on, boys. Just one, we just need one to start and then the rest should start chiming in. And at the moment, the most promising one looks like it's going to be tenure. <laughs> now, if they do roar, I'll tell you right now, I'll get goosebumps because the whole vehicle start vibrating. The sound is just amazing. And it, it does send a couple of chills down your, your spine. It's a pretty cool thing, especially in such close proximity. Now, I've completely forgot who's just asked this question. Sorry, Nikki. <laughs> Topical, hey? Ever. Do the lions ever scare anybody when they roar? Yeah, so um, <laughs> I wonder. I don't know. Anybody in camp in FC, anybody in final control get nervous when the lions roar? I, I bet when they roar, when they're right outside camp, like I said, and the, the windows start to vibrate, that's an intimidating sound. <clears throat> I think the first time you ever hear a lion roar, it's probably a bit on the intimidating side. But again, the adrenaline is rushing through you. It's a, it's sort of, you feel confused. You don't quite know what your body is feeling. It's a, it's a, it's a hard thing to describe. You have to just experience it for yourself. So, so I think initially, especially anybody that comes from the city and has never been out into the African wilderness before, then yes, definitely. And I reckon the impala must panic it every now and then too, or the buffalo, when they hear those sounds going, oh no, that means they're probably going to be up and on the move. I'd be a bit nervous if I was a prey species archer at night and in the dark. Sounds like the fiery neck night jars have also just started calling too. Right, we're going to sit on tight and hold our breaths. Well, maybe we shouldn't hold our breaths for that long. Um, <clears throat> and hope that, of course, these lions are going to roar. Let's go and see what Brent is going to pull out of his hat next. No, they've all gone flat again. <laughs> or no, actually, 
Have they? Or has Tino just decided that he's grooming himself in the most bizarre fashion? <sighs> Time is not on our side this evening. Well, if they don't roar now, they are close enough to the dam that you should be able to hear it. So have a little listen throughout the night. And, of course, it's always nice to hear that. Perhaps you can just leave it playing in the background. Turn the volume up nice and loud and uh, hear what you can hear. We'll see what you can hear. It should be quite cool. You may even hear some thunder because there is a big lightning storm coming from the east. But it has been fantastic. A very hot afternoon filled with gremlins. Sorry about that. But we'll try again tomorrow. At least we got the Birmingham boys. And hopefully they'll be around in the morning. We'll see you on the Sunrise Safari.